Today we're recapping all the events of Dark Season 2. There's a lot to cover, so feel free to use the chapter markers in the description to jump around to key moments in the series. With that, let's get into it. Seven months pass. On June 21st, 1921, a young Noah and another man dig the tunnels that will one day transport Jonas and others through time. The man comments that it is strange for the end and beginning to be the same. In reply, Noah simply states, Sic mundus creatus est, thus the world was created. The man refocuses to the task at hand, chanting Sic mundus creatus est, while continuing to dig. Outside the cave, they discuss a prophecy handed down by someone named Adam. In six days, paradise begins and hell on earth will end, Noah says. The other man is skeptical. Noah says that Adam was right. The man has lost faith. The man says that he has waited for this moment, and it's interesting that it's Noah. Before Noah executes him, the man says that he hopes the day will come when Noah doesn't believe everything Adam tells him. He tells Noah to ask Adam why he took him in, and why he called him Noah. Then Noah kills the man. Later, young Noah meets with his older self and asks these exact questions. The older Noah tells him that he will understand when the time is right. Having provided guidance to his younger self, it is time for Noah to receive guidance of his own. He meets with Adam, his leader. Adam reminds Noah that the apocalypse must happen and that with so little time left, Noah must find the missing pages. It is June 21st, 2020, six days before the apocalypse. A federal task force has been formed to investigate the unsolved missing children cases from months earlier. This task force will be led by an agent named Clausen. He announces to the town a plan to re-interview everyone involved in the case. Later, he sits with Charlotte so they can get to work. Wooler brings them the case files and they begin planning their investigation. Meanwhile, Ehrlich's wife Katerina, neglecting her children, has been doing her own investigation. She's been exploring the Winden Cave, though is yet to find anything useful. At Katerina's home, her daughter Marta is looking for her in Mikkel's room, but instead finds only Ulrich's case files. Going through them, she sees a photo of the metal door in the cave. When her brother Magnus arrives, she shows him the photo and says she thinks this is what their mother is looking for. Regina Tiedemann meets with her doctor as the cancer progresses. Her son Bartosz leaves to meet with Marta. Without having to say much, Bartosz knows that Marta is breaking up with him. He asks if it's because of Jonas, but Marta explains that Jonas has nothing to do with it. Bartosz and Marta hardly ever see each other, and Bartosz has changed. She feels like he's hiding something. He admits that he is hiding something, but can't tell her what it is. He can't tell her about his involvement with Noah. Alexander Tiedemann gives a speech to his workers at the nuclear plant to thank them for their loyalty. In one week, the plant will be decommissioned. This is the date upon which the apocalypse will occur. Later that day, Torben returns the yellow barrels to the plant where Alexander watches as they are buried in concrete. At HG Townhouse's old store, Peter tells his daughter Elizabeth that although Townhouse died years ago, they decided to keep the store. Charlotte doesn't know her parents as they died young. So the shop is all that remains of her family. H.G. Townhouse was her grandfather. In the store, Elizabeth finds an old photo. In it, she spots Noah, the man who gave her a pocket watch months earlier. Peter meets Charlotte at the bunker to show her the photo. On the back, it says January 8, 1921, Sic mundus creatus est. At the Conwald household, Hannah sits at the table with a box containing Alexander's passport and gun from 33 years earlier. One year ago, Hannah's husband hanged himself. Five months later, her son Jonas and her lover Ulrich disappeared. Hannah picks up the gun and holds it to her head. Before Hannah joins her husband, she is interrupted by a stranger letting himself into her home. Jonas has returned to her as an older man. He tells her things only Jonas could know. He even reminds her of a time he bumped into her younger self in 1986. He is able to convince her that he is truly her son. She wants to know where her Jonas is. He explains that although he attempted to destroy the wormhole, he only closed it, meaning young Jonas is trapped in 2053. The older Jonas is here now to put an end to all this once and for all. Later that night, Hannah watches her son sleep. She notices the many scars on his back. In 2053, Jonas wakes up in a post-apocalyptic Winden. 
He has been living in his abandoned family home. He heads to the bunker that originally transported him to this time and listens to a recording. My name is Claudia Tiedemann. I'm one of the few survivors of the apocalypse on June 27th, 2020. Almost three months have passed since the catastrophe. It's unclear what exactly caused the event in Winden, but the God particle, if we can stabilize it, it might provide a way back, back to the past. Maybe we can save them, all of them. Jonas visits a cemetery and places a family photo by his father's gravestone, then visits Marta. Jonas walks through the woods with bodies hanging from trees and joins a crowd watching an execution take place. The men are being executed for going beyond the wall, into the dead zone and seeing something they were not meant to see. You're hiding God. You mustn't hide God. He's not yours alone. The woman in charge of the group orders them to hang. This woman is an older Elizabeth Doppler, Charlotte and Peter Doppler's daughter. With the help of her translator, Silja, Elizabeth reminds her followers that passage into the dead zone is punishable by death. She concludes by saying, Sic mundus creatus est, which her followers repeat in unison. Everyone leaves while Jonas stays behind. Elizabeth asks Jonas where he's been. When he doesn't reply, Elizabeth tells Jonas that there is nothing out there. Their only hope is the passage, she assures him. The prophecy will come true, and the passage will open and lead us to paradise. Jonas grows angry and tells her that all his friends and family die in six days in his time. He doesn't need her paradise. He wants to go home. He asks, what is beyond the wall? What did the men see which they had to be executed for? Elizabeth does not answer. Despite Elizabeth's warning, Jonas crosses the wall into the dead zone. He makes his way to the destroyed nuclear plant and discovers a strange glowing orb. In 2020, Charlotte is researching the photo her daughter discovered. Searching online, she translates Sic Mundus Creatus Est to Thus the World Was Created. She's interrupted when Clausen reminds her it's time to interview the Tiedemanns. Clausen is interested in the Tiedemanns as the children's disappearances seem to cluster around the nuclear plant. He also finds it odd that Alexander took his wife Regina's last name when they married. At the Tiedemanns, Clausen asks Regina several questions, but is particularly interested in her husband's last name. Why did he take hers rather than Regina take his as is traditional? Regina does not answer, but has something else she wants to share. Around the time the children went missing, a strange man stayed in Regina's hotel. After the man disappeared, she took the belongings he left behind. She shares them with Charlotte and Clausen. As Charlotte goes through the older Jonas Conwald's things, she discovers a copy of a page from her grandfather's book, A Journey Through Time. She makes up an excuse and leaves the interview. Meanwhile, older Jonas, no longer looking to keep secrets, shows Hannah the time machine. He explains that it can travel 33 years forward or backwards. He'd like to take Hannah to 1987, where she can see Mikkel herself, and see that her husband was, in fact, an accidental time traveler. He takes Hannah into the caves. It is safer to travel from there, he says. Then, in 1987, Hannah is given a glimpse of her husband, Mikkel. At the nuclear plant, Claudia is alerted by her secretary that a woman arrived looking for her dog. Claudia doesn't realize that the dog is, in fact, Gretchen, the very dog she lost in 1953. The woman, waiting in her office, reveals herself to be an older Claudia from the future. Older Claudia explains that in 1953, she was waiting in the cave to grab Gretchen and brought the pup to 1986, where a middle-aged Claudia found her. Older Claudia is there to ensure that things happen as they always have in this time cycle. At the same time, Claudia's father Egon visits Helga in the hospital, who is recovering from his car accident. Egon has been thinking about the Mads Nielsen case. He never got around to asking Helga, why not Forest Road? Cryptically, Helga tells Egon that he said he can change everything. He can change the past and the future. When Egon asks who, Helga says the man with the stone. But no one can change it. No one. Not even the white devil. Egon then visits an institution. The man they arrested in 1953 for Helga's kidnapping has been kept there for 34 years. 
The older, broken Ulrich greets Egon and says, My only aim is to take many lives. The more, the better I feel. Quoting disturbing lyrics from a song Egon heard from a teenage Ulrich only months earlier. Ulrich says that he knows when Egon will die because he read it in the papers. Disturbed by the encounter, Egon leaves. Older Claudia and her younger self go to the caves where the plant's barrels are stored. Older Claudia shows her the time machine. She explains that it allows for travel backward or forward 33 years. She says it will take exactly 33 years until the cycle is complete again. You will stand here where I am standing and you will accept your part in all of this and every sacrifice it requires. In five days, everything starts over. You must stop Adam. Her younger self is confused, but Claudia assures that she'll understand soon. Until then, everything will happen the way it always has. She also adds that if everything works out, her daughter Regina will get to live, but at the moment their time together is short. Older Claudia hands her younger self some papers, then activates the machine and disappears. These papers contain instructions guiding Claudia to dig a hole in her front yard, where she will find the time machine buried by older Claudia in 1954. In 2053, Jonas listens to more of Claudia's recordings to learn that the glowing orb represents the god particle. If stabilized, it could allow for time travel. Jonas manages to stabilize the particle for just a moment before it again destabilizes. To make it last, Jonas will need more gas for the generators. He sets a trap so that music blasts at full volume from a building. This draws the attention of some of Elizabeth's followers in a truck. While they are distracted, Jonas steals some of their gasoline. However, as he returns to the dead zone, Elizabeth and Silja capture him. Before hanging, Jonas asks Elizabeth why she is lying to everyone. That earns him a gunshot to the leg. Then he tells the crowd, In five days, in my time, everybody is going to die. I have to stop that. There is no prophecy. The passage will never open. Your paradise does not exist. But behind the walls there he is cut off as Elizabeth kicks the board out from under him. Jonas hangs from the neck. Then Elizabeth shoots the rope to free him. That night, Soja asks Jonas why Elizabeth spared his life. She asks who he really is. When Jonas doesn't answer, she tells him to show her what really is in the dead zone. So he takes her to the nuclear plant and shows her the god particle. He explains that it's a portal and his only way back home. Using the gasoline he obtained, he's able to power the generators, stabilize the particle, and walk through it. In the time since Jonas began his travels through time, Noah and his group have managed to get the time travel chair working more reliably. In 1987, Noah has Helga in the chair. He reminds him that he was chosen by God. He tells Helga that time is always with him. He carries it, and it carries him. Then Noah says, Tick tock, which Helga repeats. This will become a nervous mantra Helga repeats throughout his life, into old age. In 1954, Egon's wife Doris and Ulrich's grandmother Agnes are physically intimate. Egon is unaware of this, but does notice something is wrong in his marriage. He seeks advice from Daniel Conwald, police chief, father to Ines and Jana. He advises that Egon should seek satisfaction from someone other than his wife. Their conversation is interrupted by the news that Helga Doppler has returned. However, when Egon checks in on him, he finds that a silent Helga has not spoken a word since his return. In the Doppler bunker, Agnes meets with older Claudia. She lets Claudia know that Helga and Noah returned to 1954 today. She also tells Claudia that she is no longer afraid of Noah. Claudia replies with a reminder that Noah and Agnes are brother and sister. She goes on to say that Sigmundus, Noah's group led by Adam, is preparing for the next cycle in four days. Noah is a blind fool that has caused so much suffering, but it will soon end. Then she hands Agnes a newspaper article. Agnes is disturbed by what she sees in the article. Claudia comforts her, saying that her mother Doris will make Agnes very happy. She thanks Agnes for everything, and they hug goodbye. After this meeting, Agnes has another strange encounter, this time with her brother Noah. She's had a falling out with Sigmundus, betraying Adam to side with Claudia. 
However, she wants back in. In return, she can tell Noah where the missing pages are, the ones Adam pressed Noah to find. Agnes tells Noah that the older Claudia is carrying them. She then shows Noah the newspaper article, giving him a time and place where he can find Claudia. While Agnes meets with her brother, Claudia sees her father. Claudia's mismatched eye colors remind Egon of his daughter. The mysterious older woman in his office apologizes to him, but Egon doesn't know what for. She tells him, you're much too good a person. At home, Egon's daughter, still a young girl, tells him the same. He is unaware that the woman in his office was his daughter after aging several decades. In the woods, child Claudia asks Trant, Ulrich's father, about his life before Winden. He mentions that he grew up in a home and that his mother Agnes has a brother. He thinks the two of them hated each other. In 1987, heeding her older self's warning that their time is limited, Claudia asks her daughter if she'd like to skip school and spend some time together. Regina passes. Instead, Claudia heads to the hospital to see Helga and ask about the book he gave her, A Journey Through Time. Why did he give it to her? Helga doesn't quite answer and instead says that he thinks Claudia is one of the few who might understand him. He goes on to rant about Noah. There is a battle between good and evil. Travelers can undo everything that happens. If we succeed, none of it will happen. Helga tells Claudia that Noah said all this and warns her never to trust him. From Helga, Claudia heads over to H.G. Townhouse's shop to speak with the author himself. He explains that the book represents a bootstrapped paradox, meaning it is a past event caused by a future event in an endless cycle with no true origin. Years ago, an older Claudia visited Townhouse and gave him a copy of the book he had not yet written. He plagiarizes from his future self to write the book which one day Claudia will hand him. The older Claudia also told Townhouse that this day will come. Her younger self will visit. Townhouse is meant to explain it to this younger Claudia how the time machine works, something he can only do because it was explained to him a year earlier by Jonas. As Claudia discusses time travel, her father Egon does the same. He's gone to the institution to see a man he does not yet know is Ulrich. Egon is dying of cancer. In their previous encounter, the man in the institution somehow seemed to predict this. Egon asks him how he knew. Ulrich finally admits that his name is Ulrich Nielsen, and he tells Egon that he comes from the future. In 1954, Egon has a much less fruitful conversation with a younger Ulrich. Since Helga returned home safely, it is now assumed Ulrich must have had an accomplice. Who else could have taken care of the boy until now? However, this Ulrich is heavily medicated and barely able to speak, so Egon learns nothing of this supposed accomplice. In 1987, armed with the name Ulrich Nielsen, Egon begins putting the pieces together. The mystery boy that appeared a few months earlier claimed an Ulrich Nielsen was his father. At the time, Egon thought it a prank, as Ulrich, in 1987, is just a teenager. However, as Egon is learning, Ulrich is also an old man trapped in an institution. Following the trail, Egon visits Ines Conwald's home in the hopes of speaking with her adopted son, Michael, who is truly Mikkel, the boy who claimed Ulrich Nielsen is his father. He is asleep now, but Ines reluctantly agrees Egon can speak to him tomorrow. On the way out, Egon notices sleeping pills, which Ines claims are for her. One of their side effects is amnesia. Perhaps they would explain why a young boy is asleep so early in the day. Perhaps they would also help a boy forget that he is from the future and live a normal life. Egon borrows a photo of the boy and leaves. Returning to the institution, Egon tells Ulrich that a boy appeared in Winden a few months earlier. He shows a picture of the boy. Learning that his son has appeared in the same time period as him, Ulrich loses it. He attacks Egon and accuses him of keeping this information secret. After learning to use the machine, Claudia returns to the nuclear plant where her father Egon is waiting to see her. She is furious at him for showing up unannounced, but the tone of the conversation shifts when Egon announces he has cancer. He is dying, the same way Claudia's daughter Regina is dying in 2020. Claudia will see this firsthand when, after this meeting, she uses the device for the first time and sees her ill daughter in the future. 
1954, old Claudia is found by Noah. She knows he will kill her, but is unintimidated. Her death is one part of a game Noah still does not know how to play. She tells him he is a pawn for Adam. The paradise he's promised is a lie. Noah's freedom is an illusion. Her words give Noah pause before he shoots and kills her. He finds the missing pages on her and looks through them. He is disturbed by what he reads. Charlotte Doppler is his daughter. Returning to 1921, Noah lies to Adam and claims Claudia did not have the missing pages on her. Adam tells Noah, she got exactly what she deserved. In the end, we all get what we deserve. Agnes looks at the newspaper article that Claudia gave her. Its headline reads, unidentified woman's body found in woods. Jonas, after stepping through the God particle in 2053, finds himself in a field in 1921. Two men discover him, and seeing his wounds, assume he is a returned prisoner of war. They take him to an inn run by Erna, a woman who tends to take in strays like him. At the inn, Jonas meets a young Agnes, his great-great-grandmother. She lives there along with her brother Noah. After sleeping for 24 hours, Jonas wakes up to see a young Noah who says, I picture you differently. He knew he'd be meeting this young Jonas one day. After Noah leaves the room, Jonas notices an image of the emerald tablet containing the phrase, Sic mundus creatus est, over a triketra, the same one that can be found on the time travel doors in Winden Cave. It's all connected. Jonas quickly sets off for the cave hoping to return to his time and hopefully save his loved ones from the impending apocalypse. However, crawling through the metal doors, all he finds is a dead end. There is no wormhole yet. Dejected, Jonas leaves the cave and finds young Noah eating an apple. He informs Jonas it'll be another 32 years before the hole in time is opened. Noah then tells Jonas that Sikmundus, the travelers, want to see him. If Jonas wants to return home, seeing them is the only way. In 2020, older Jonas discovers the box on Hannah's kitchen table, the one containing Alexander's gun and passport. After some questioning, Hannah reveals that the box contains blackmail material, but shares no further detail. While they talk, Charlotte arrives. Hannah calls her over without Jonas's knowledge. Hannah quickly reveals to Charlotte that the man in her kitchen is an older Jonas. Having already been exposed to the time travel conspiracy, Charlotte accepts this. Charlotte shows Jonas the photograph her daughter discovered and asks if he knows a particular man she points at. He does. It is Noah. He describes the group as travelers that call themselves Sigmundus. Then, Charlotte takes Hannah and Jonas to the bunker where they meet Peter. The wall is covered with notes and drawings related to the game of time travel chess being played in Winden. Hannah sees Ulrich's mugshot from 1953. Peter explains that he and Trant were visited by an older Claudia that explained everything to them. He shares with Jonas the notebook chronicling the children's disappearances and other events. A notebook that is currently missing pages, now in Noah's possession. Hannah is shocked that Charlotte and Peter knew all this about Mikkel and Ulrich. She insists they have to tell Katerina. Charlotte agrees and says she'll be the one to tell her. Charlotte picks up Katerina to take her to the bunker. It's easier to show her than explain, Charlotte says, but Katerina is insistent. Finally, Charlotte admits that they found Katerina's husband and son. They're not dead, but they are not here. You have to see it with your own eyes, Charlotte tells her. At the bunker, they tell Katerina everything. Mikkel traveled through time to become Michael. Ulrich was stranded in the 50s. She is skeptical, but the others insist it is true. When the older Jonas tells her it's true and that he is her grandson, Katerina hits a breaking point and laughs. Hannah tells Katerina that she went back in time herself and saw Mikkel with her own eyes. Katerina tells them they've all lost it and leaves. She goes to the school where she is principal and checks old files to find the boy named Michael Conwald, the boy who attended school there 33 years earlier. She finds a photograph and sees her son who disappeared months earlier. Katerina accepts the truth. In the bunker, Peter asks what's next, but Jonas says it doesn't matter. Everything will happen as it always has. So Peter responds, why are you here? 
Jonas explains that Adam, the head of Sigmundus, said there is a loophole. He continues to say that Adam wants the final cycle to begin in three days. Jonas is here to stop him, something the older Claudia tried to do herself. But in the end, she became exactly what she was fighting against. Then Jonas leaves. At the Nielsen house, Marta and her brother Magnus wonder what to do about their mother who seems to have gone off the deep end. They are interrupted when Charlotte's daughters, Francisca and Elizabeth, arrive. Magnus and Francisca, now a couple, have been fighting, but begin to reconcile. The children all discuss how weird everyone has been acting. So they decide to head to the cave and determine for themselves what is going on. In the caves, the Doppler and Nielsen children discuss Jonas. Marta still dreams of him. It feels so real, she wonders if he's still alive. Francisca wonders if Jonas knew something he shouldn't, and that's why he disappeared. In the cave, they hear someone else there, and find it is their friend Bartosz, the boy Marta broke up with days earlier. They furiously ask him what he is doing there. When he refuses to answer, they become violent. They inspect his time machine and ask what it is. He remains silent. Failing to garner any information, they tie him up in the cave, take the machine, and abandon the boy who was once their friend. Claudia, currently visiting from 1987, stops at the power plant. She asks if Claudia Tiedemann is there, but is told that the only Tiedemann around is Alexander. She is confused. Inside, Alexander, the director of the plant, is being questioned by Clausen. He asks a few questions until he gets to the one that is of particular interest to him. Why did Alexander take his wife's last name? Alexander claims it was to keep the Tiedemann name alive. Regina has no siblings, so this was the only way. Clausen asks for Alexander's original last name, and he reveals it to be Cooler. Having no luck at the plant, Claudia visits the local library. Although confused by the modern technology, she learns to navigate it well enough. From her readings, she learns of the prior 33 years events. It's reported that Claudia disappeared without a trace years earlier. She learns of the marriage between her daughter Regina and a man named Alexander. She also learns that her father will be found dead at his home on June 26, 1987. Today is June 24th. Clausen and Torben chat before interviewing Hannah. Torben asks Clausen if he volunteered for the task force, and Clausen answers, oh yes. He has a very specific reason for taking the position, which will soon be revealed. As they continue to drive, Clausen lists the many strange occurrences in Winden and asks Torben for his take. He simply says he doesn't know. Clausen then asks Torben what happened to his eye. Okay but you can't tell anyone, Torben says. Before he can divulge the secret, they have to swerve the car to avoid crashing into an oblivious, time-traveling Claudia. She is on her way to the cave so she can return to 1987. In 1921, Noah brings young Jonas to see Adam. The older Noah escorts him underground and through a doorway marked Sic Mundus Creatus Est. Inside, Jonas meets the badly disfigured Adam, who explains that time travel takes its toll. The human body is not meant to experience it continually. Jonas exclaims that he wants all this to end, and Adam promises it will soon. Then Jonas asks Adam who he is. Adam opens his collar to reveal a neck scar. Jonas learns that the man in front of him, Adam, is his future self, the thing he will become in 66 years. In 2053, Silja has just witnessed Jonas disappear into the God Particle. Before she can return to camp, Elizabeth discovers her. She is in the dead zone, an offense punishable by death. Elizabeth demands to know why Silja is here. Instead of answering, Silja demands to know what the glowing orb in the other room is. Elizabeth answers, they say it is a piece of God, but it's really a piece of the devil. The morning after leaving Bartosz in Winden Cave, Marta and Magnus rush to revisit him and see if he'll talk. On the way out of the house, their mother Katerina tries to talk with them. She wants to show them the photograph of Mikkel from decades earlier. She wants to tell them the truths she's learned. However, Marta is furious that after neglecting them for so long, she suddenly thinks they'll drop everything to indulge her. Marta storms out of the house with Magnus. Marta, Magnus, Francisca, and Elizabeth return to the cave. In the cave, they continue interrogating Bartosz. He says that he is not allowed to tell them anything, and even if he did, 
they wouldn't believe him. They threaten to leave him for dead, and Bartosz finally admits the device is a time machine. They release him to show how it works. He activates the device, and the five of them are engulfed in the Black Orb. They are transported to 1987. As they leave the cave, Bartosz tells his friends about how he was convinced all this was real when Noah predicted future events, Jonas and Marta kissing, or Bartosz's mother getting cancer, for example. Noah also told him there is a war over time. His grandmother is a part of it, and so is Jonas. Once they reach the bus stop, they see enough evidence to realize Bartosz is telling the truth. They are, in fact, in 1987. Armed with the knowledge of time travel and Bartosz's device, they return to 2019. Still in 1987, Ulrich looks at a picture of his son, then leaps to action and escapes the institution. He finds Mikkel, and after 33 years, is reunited with his son. Mikkel doesn't recognize him at first, but notes that he seems familiar. Ulrich turns a cup upside down and says, the question isn't how, but when. These are the last words Mikkel said to Ulrich the morning before he disappeared. Mikkel, the boy who never knew where he belonged, is given a taste of familiar for the first time in nearly a year. Mikkel and Ulrich tearfully embrace. At the hospital, Ines hears someone has escaped the loony bin. She rushes home to make sure her adopted son is safe, but finds he is missing. The two cups left on the table tell her someone else was there. She calls Egon, who quickly realizes it must be the older Ulrich that kidnapped Mikkel. Ulrich and Mikkel run for the caves to return home, but are stopped by Egon and his reinforcements. Father and son are separated again. Ulrich swears he'll bring Mikkel home and swears that the next time he sees Egon, he will kill him. As he's driven back to the institution, Ulrich sees a group of time travelers from 2020, including his children, Marta and Magnus. He begs the driver to stop, but of course, they do not. With her son safely back at home, Ines makes him a warm beverage mixed with sleeping pills to help him forget. It is now the day before Egon Tiedemann is to die. Claudia pays him a visit. She insists that Egon move in with her and Regina. Her next stop is Burned Doppler's home. She doesn't know the details of last summer's incident at the plant, but knows enough to say it was not a reaction in the volume control system. Cornered, Burned finally gives her the files that reveal the truth. She quickly sees the results that should be impossible. They've discovered the God Particle. They have to go public. Burned tells her to do what she will with the data, but to leave his name out of it. He does not want the plant's legacy to be affected. At the plant, Claudia hands some of the cesium from the waste barrels to a scientist and asks him confidentially to analyze it. In 2020, Katerina visits Hannah and demands to know how she was able to see Mikkel. Hannah reveals that older Jonas has a time machine. After Katerina calls Hannah a parasite, for sleeping with Katerina's husband and son. They are interrupted by Clausen's arrival. He shows both of them a sketch of older Jonas and asks if they know him. Both say no. Time machine in hand, the older Jonas visits Marta's home. He leaves a necklace of St. Christopher on her pillow. He then meets with Charlotte in the bunker to answer her questions. Who is Noah? He is Adam's puppet. He killed Mads, Eric, and Yasin. Charlotte suspects that all this somehow relates to her. Do you know who my parents are? She asks. No, but I know your grandfather, Jonas replies. Charlotte explains that Townhouse raised her, but was not her biological grandfather. She asks if Townhouse was one of the travelers, but Jonas says that no, he's just a pawn like most of us. He, like Jonas and Peter, was used by Claudia. Charlotte races back to the clockmaker's store and inspects the time machine blueprints. While there, she is visited by Noah. Charlotte knows who he is and quickly says, you killed the children. Noah explains that he can't change what she thinks of him, but hopefully one day, she'll see that these awful events will be erased. The things that he's done, he'll no longer have done. Noah shows her a photograph of him holding Charlotte, his daughter, as a baby. Charlotte learns she is, for the first time, meeting her biological father, Noah. 
Noah says that her mother took this picture and he promised her that he'd bring their daughter back. He didn't know that his daughter was here this whole time, but Adam did. Noah tells Charlotte that having read the missing pages of the notebook, he knows Adam is expecting the apocalypse to happen again. Noah now knows what he must do. He has to end Adam so that everyone will live, not just those in the bunker. Before Noah leaves, Charlotte tearfully asks who her mother is. Cryptically, he answers, she loved you very much. She still does. Older Jonas returns home to Hannah. He sees a picture of Mikkel on the table and asks if he ever meant anything to Hannah. If she could choose between him and Ulrich now, who would she choose? Jonas tells Hannah that with everything going on, he thought she was the one person he could trust. Hannah admits she ruined everything and tries to stop Jonas from leaving her. He coldly tells her that she needs no one, only herself. In another part of town, Marta returns home from her travels in the past and finds Jonas's St. Christopher necklace on her pillow, a sign that he has returned. In 1921, Jonas demands to know why he is there. Adam speaks in platitudes without giving him direct answers. Finally, Jonas exclaims that there must be a way to change it all so things happen differently. A loophole, Adam suggests. It took him 66 years, but he claims to have found one. Jonas tells Adam that in the future, there is a prophecy that Sigmundus will lead the world into paradise. Is this a religion, Jonas asks. Adam insists it is the opposite and says they had decided to wage war on time, on God. We're creating a new world without time, without God. He insists that God is not a thinking entity, but is time itself, a physical law. God is time, and time is not merciful. Our fates are simply a concatenation of cause and effect, he says. Adam ruminates on how the world is a gigantic knot that traps us all. Jonas asks why he's doing any of this if the knot can't be changed. Adam remembers sitting in Jonas's seat, asking the same question and thinking he can't understand how he'd ever become the man sitting in front of him. 66 years later, he understands. Some moments change us forever. Some pain you never forget. Adam says there is a way. The chair in the bunker, the briefcase time machine, the orb in the future, are all advancements on a time machine, but they are not the end of the chain. Adam has a machine that is more advanced, one that is not limited to fixed 33-year increments, meaning Jonas can travel to the day Mikkel committed suicide and stop the chain of events that followed. He can stop Mikkel from disappearing as a child. Adam shows him the machine. It looks like the one in the future, but is not the same, Adam says. Over the years, people have called it many things, such as ether, dark matter, or the Higgs field. Jonas asks how it came to be. Adam explains that the one in the future came from the impending disaster that causes the apocalypse. This one is a technological achievement brought to you by Sick Mundus. Adam stabilizes the particle, and Jonas walks through the portal to June 20th, 2019 the day before Mikkel took his own life. He will stop this from happening, stop Mikkel from traveling in time, and stop himself from ever existing. The knot will be destroyed. Marta and the others will live. June 21st, 2019, the day before Mikkel's suicide. A younger Jonas has breakfast with his mother and father. Afterwards, he's planning to meet his friends at the lake. Hannah reminds Michael that Ulrich and Katerina Nielsen are having a party that night. She confirms again that Michael does not want to attend. Michael is uneasy, knowing he's quickly approaching the beginning of the loop in time that sent him to 1986 and turned him from Mikkel to Michael. On a bright, sunny day, Jonas and his friends head to the lake while future Jonas arrives from Adam's lair. At the Nielsen's, Mikkel is ill with rubella. At the Dopplers, Charlotte is not speaking with her husband, Peter, after learning of his recent infidelities. She'll be going to the Nielsen's party alone that night. At the lake, Jonas and Marta grow closer. While talking, they discover something buried in the sand, a medal of St. Christopher. 
the patron saint of travelers. In about a year, Marta will find this same medal on her pillow, left for her by an older Jonas. As they continue to lounge, Marta tells Jonas that sometimes she feels like she can feel what is about to happen. Before they can kiss, Marta's brother Magnus spoils the mood. Then Jonas remembers he has to leave to see his grandma. Moments later, time-traveling Jonas appears. He hides the scar on his neck and approaches Marta. Jonas is different and Marta can tell. He doesn't reveal his identity, but tells Marta he thinks they're a perfect match and never to think anything else. They kiss and Jonas leaves after giving her one last look. At the Nielsen's party, the residents of Winden are having a great time, though some of the lies are already beginning. Where is Peter? Hannah asks. Charlotte lies and says he's ill with a summer cold. Ulrich and Katerina are happy together, and Hannah watches with jealousy. They've not yet begun their affair. Future Jonas returns to his home where his father, Michael, awaits. Jonas embraces his father and tells him he knows. What do you know? Michael asks. Jonas raises a fist and speaks the same greeting Mikkel said to him the night he disappeared. Ultimate fist bump? Realization dawns on Mikkel. Jonas knows the truth. Mikkel asks for forgiveness. The two sit down and Jonas tells his story. He begs Mikkel not to hang himself. Jonas asks if he already wrote the letter. But Mikkel is confused. What letter? He asks. Jonas hands over the letter which has not yet been written and explains he is here to stop the endless loop that began with Mikkel's suicide. With their truths spoken, they're able to speak openly. Jonas asks Mikkel what happened the night he disappeared. How did Mikkel end up at the cave and in 1986? He surprises Jonas by saying that after they were separated, Mikkel was guided by another Jonas. The other Jonas brought Mikkel to the cave and through the tunnel. Jonas told Mikkel they'd have to spend the night in the cave, but when he awoke, Jonas was gone. Over the years, Mikkel's memory of the event faded into a dream. But today, it's all coming back to him. He wonders aloud if maybe Jonas didn't come to stop him, but to show him what he must do. Maybe Mikkel needs to die. So the events carry on as they originally did. So Jonas will be born. Maybe Jonas's role is much greater than he thinks. These are words Jonas has heard before. Mikkel resolves to write the letter and hang himself. God has a plan, he reassures Jonas. Just then, the older Claudia appears. Jonas doesn't know her, so she introduces herself as opposition to Adam. Adam is the darkness. Claudia follows the light. She tells Jonas that Adam lied. He did not intend for Jonas to stop anything, but as Mikkel suggested, ensure everything happens as it always has. Adam doesn't want to fix things. He wants to destroy them. Claudia echoes Mikkel and says, Jonas plays a larger role than he thinks. Only Jonas can put an end to all this. Jonas offers that if he erases his own existence, Adam loses the war. But Claudia tells him she's seen a world without Jonas, and it isn't what you would expect. Jonas and Mikkel have to make sacrifices for the greater cause of saving their loved ones. Events must occur as they did before. At the Nielsen's party, Katerina tends to an ill Mikkel. Upstairs, Jonas and Marta grow closer. She gives him the Medal of St. Christopher, which she's turned into a necklace. They kiss. Outside in the rain, Ulrich and Hannah sit. He asks if this is the apocalypse, a line he said to her 33 years earlier during a similar rainstorm. As the rain picks up, they find themselves closer. They kiss, and the affair begins. Upstairs, Jonas and Marta make love. This is the thing that happened between them over the summer. At his childhood home, a tearful Jonas leaves Mikkel and follows Claudia to his destiny. In his studio, Mikkel sits down to write a letter. A Jonas 66 years older and badly disfigured from years of time travel holds the necklace of Saint Christopher in the palm of his hand. In 1954, the older Claudia's body is examined as Egon observes. He recognizes her as the woman that visited the station the day Helga returned. 
The police chief tells him to show her picture to Helga and see if he recognizes her. Perhaps she was the madman's accomplice. Egon shows Helga the photo of Claudia. He recognizes her. Noah told him that she is the White Devil. She wants to kill all of us, Helga says. Egon reassures him that the woman is dead. But she hasn't even started yet, Helga responds. In 1987, it is the day Egon is going to die. Realizing this, Claudia rushes to see him. She insists on joining him at his first chemo appointment. Egon reflects on his life. He thinks he did something very stupid, he says. He believes time travel is real. He believes that Ulrich is a time traveler that tried to reunite with his son Mikkel. And Egon believes himself responsible for preventing the time traveler's reunion and return home. He's figured out the truth. At Egon's home, he continues to think of Ulrich. Why did he want to go to that cave? Could there be something there? Claudia insists there is nothing in the cave. Egon realizes she knows the truth. She is part of it. Egon decides he must call the station to have them search the caves. Claudia cannot allow this to go public. With little thought, she springs to action and kills her father. The time loop continues and events occur as they always have. On June 26th, 1987, Egon Tiedemann dies mysteriously in his home. Claudia remembers what her older self told her. She would have to make sacrifices so that her daughter Regina could live. She accepts that her father must die. With his dying words, Egon tells Claudia that she is the White Devil. In 2020, older Jonas wakes up and sees his time machine is gone. Hannah has taken it. At the Doppler home, Charlotte relays what she learned from Noah to Peter. Tomorrow the world will end, and only those in the bunker will survive. She also tearfully tells Peter that her mother is alive. Clausen visits the nuclear plant and arrests Alexander Tiedemann on suspicion of identity theft. In the interrogation room, Clausen finally reveals his true intentions. His brother vanished years earlier in 1986. His brother's name was Alexander Cooler, the same as Alexander's assumed name. A couple of months ago, Clausen received an anonymous letter stating that the truth around his brother's disappearance can be found in Winden. He suspects Alexander killed Clausen's brother and stole his identity. Magnus, Marta, and the others, knowing time travel to be real, debate their next move. Finding St. Christopher's medal, Marta believes Jonas is back and they should track him down. He'll know more than they do. Magnus and Francisca suggest they should tell someone else what they've learned. Angry with Bartosz, Marta says whatever they do next, he isn't a part of it. She storms off and heads to the Conwald residence, where she finds a stranger waiting. Marta is looking for Hannah and doesn't know this man. She turns to leave and mentions that she has a feeling of deja vu. A glitch in the Matrix, Jonas says. He said the same thing on the night Mikkel disappeared. This stranger is an older Jonas. While they talk, Katarina breaks into the house. She separates them and angrily tells Marta the truths she's learned about Jonas and Mikkel. That Marta is Jonas's aunt. Katarina is looking for the time machine so she can retrieve Mikkel from the past. Jonas says it is missing and that Hannah took it. But Marta tells Katarina they have one, the one from Bartosz. At the Doppler home, Francisca, Elizabeth, and Magnus tell Peter and Charlotte about the time machine and how they used it. Charlotte tells them they should stay out of all this, and Francisca becomes angry when she learns Peter and Charlotte knew about time travel already. She's sick of all the secrets and lies. As they argue, Magnus receives a call from Marta and learns Jonas is back and older. Marta, Magnus, and Katerina reconvene with the device from Bartosz. Katerina takes it. Hannah uses Jonas's time machine and travels to 1954. She claims to be Ulrich's husband and convinces Egon to allow a brief meeting between them. At the prison, they meet. Ulrich has to ask a few times before he believes it's really her. For a moment, Hannah is happy to see him. Then, Ulrich asks about Mikkel and Katarina. He asks about his other children, Marta and Magnus. He asks about everyone except her. 
Disappointed, Hannah asks who he would choose between her and Katerina right now. Ulrich lies to her. He says he loves her. He'll leave Katerina if she gets him out. He begs Hannah to get him out of there. Coldly, Hannah walks away and tells Egon she was mistaken. This man is not her husband. Back in his office, Egon asks if Hannah will be leaving soon. No, she's looking for a fresh start. He lights her cigarette for her and Egon smiles. In 1987, he bleeds to death while his daughter watches. In 1921, Claudia, the white devil, is a corpse in a morgue. After murdering her father, a shaken Claudia returns home. She cleans blood from her hands and weeps until Jonas arrives. Jonas tells Claudia that he knows what she did, but also tells her that, according to the older Claudia, it doesn't have to happen the same way next time. Jonas asks her to come with him. When Claudia asks where they're going, he tells her they are going to the future. Jonas explains that his future self tried to close the hole and reverse everything. He shut the passage but didn't break the loop. Older Claudia explained that they could change a small part of the equation, so in the next cycle, Jonas could be successful. All of this won't happen. Mikkel won't disappear. Michael won't die. Claudia's father will live. Jonas extracts cesium from one of the yellow barrels and explains that big and small things don't abide by the same laws. The big things can't be changed, but maybe small things can. She and Jonas will change a grain of sand and with it, the whole world. Jonas is going to open the passage in the tunnels once again. He reveals that over the last 12 months, after leaving his father behind and following the older Claudia, he studied with her. He learned everything about the past and future. He learned that Adam wants to create a new world, while Jonas and Claudia want to save this one. It is June 27th, 2020, the day of the apocalypse. Older Jonas grabs the gun Hannah left behind and goes to Marta's home. He tells Marta that the future starts in a few hours, a new cycle. She has to come with him. He begs her to believe him, to trust him, she pulls away and asks him to leave. Jonas refuses. He won't see her die again. With Hannah's gun, he forces her to comply. At gunpoint, Marta goes to the Doppler family bunker. She must remain there if she is to survive the apocalypse. He promises Marta that her Jonas will return and begs her not to leave the bunker under any circumstances. Then he apologizes and leaves. Alexander Tiedemann is still being held by the police. Clausen accepts he may not be able to prove he murdered his brother, but armed with a search warrant for the nuclear plant, he'll figure out what is happening there. Bartosz tells his mother Regina that her mother visited and said she was sorry. He hands her the photo Claudia left behind. Bartosz kisses his mother goodbye and leaves, promising to return. Searching for the device taken from him, Bartosz finds Magnus and Francisca. They tell him that their mother has the device. Bartosz worries that he messed up, but Francisco wonders if he did exactly what he was meant to. Perhaps his task was to show his friends how the device works. He runs off in search of the machine. Katerina, with the device in hand, goes to the Conwalds' home in search of Jonas. She doesn't find him, but does find his map of the caves, the futuristic flashlight, and a Geiger counter. She grabs the supplies and leaves. On her way out, she notices Michael's photo album. She looks through it for a glimpse at Mikkel growing up, something she never got to see. Then older Jonas arrives, and Katerina asks him to show how the device works. She asks how to bring Mikkel back. Jonas tells her it would be impossible. Things in the past can't be changed. Because Jonas already exists, Mikkel can't return. Katerina snaps that Jonas shouldn't even exist in the first place. He agrees, but has no choice. His future already exists. However, he thinks aloud, even if he can't stop himself from becoming Adam, perhaps he can stop Adam from achieving his plans. In the tunnels, Jonas and Claudia crawl through the Sigmundus door. At the police station, Torben confides in Charlotte that he helped Alexander hide radioactive waste at the nuclear plant. Hearing this, she realizes the plant is where the apocalypse will be triggered. With said apocalypse mere hours away, 
Peter takes his daughter Elizabeth to the bunker. She does not want to leave her sister Francisca or her mother Charlotte behind, but with time running out, they have no choice but to go and hope the others join them later. Only those in the bunker will survive. At the nuclear plant, Clausen notices a sealed door and insists on seeing what's behind it. At Sigmundus, Noah confronts Adam, saying that he never intended to save any of them. Noah throws the missing pages on the ground in front of Adam. He points a gun and pulls the trigger to no avail. Adam then reveals another truth. He shows Noah a picture of Elizabeth. Adam tells Noah, Charlotte is your daughter. She is Elizabeth's daughter and her mother. In a strange paradox, Elizabeth and Noah will have a child together. This child, Charlotte, will grow up and eventually birth Elizabeth who in turn will grow up to have a child with Noah named Charlotte. It is another time loop. Elizabeth is her own grandmother. An older Magnus and Francisca, along with Agnes, enter the room. The knot can only be undone by destroying it entirely, Adam says. Agnes turns off the safety of the pistol and shoots her brother Noah through the chest. He falls to the floor and bleeds. Then Adam prepares to enter the God Particle and travel to Jonas' time in 2020. In the tunnel under Winden Cave, with Claudia next to him, Jonas inserts the cesium and activates the device. Its effects are felt across time and space. The passage older Jonas closed is opening again. Katarina believes this gives her a chance to rescue Mikkel. She takes the device and runs to the cave. Peter and Elizabeth make their way to the bunker, freeing Marta, who runs off. Exiting the cave in 2020, Jonas gives Claudia the device and tells her she must bring it to the bunker while Jonas looks for his mother and Marta. Two hours remain until the apocalypse. Before making her way to the bunker, Claudia visits her daughter Regina. She apologizes for leaving her as a child then brings her to the bunker where they join Peter and Elizabeth. Peter recognizes Claudia as the younger version of the woman who guided him and Trant. At the nuclear plant, at Clausen's request, they begin to excavate the barrels. Older Jonas waits at his mother's home. Young Noah finds him and hands him a letter from Marta. Jonas reads the letter. Whatever he reads shocks him as he says, this is impossible. Noah tells Jonas he must save Bartosz, Magnus, and Francisca, then later him and Agnes. The loop has to be closed so the next cycle can begin, so that Marta can live. The older Jonas leaves in a hurry. In 2053, Elizabeth crosses the wall to enter the dead zone. In 2020, Charlotte and Torben arrive at the nuclear plant. Young Jonas arrives at his mother's home and finds Marta. It's been a year since he last saw her. Since then, Marta has learned a lot. She knows about Mikkel, and she knows it was this Jonas that kissed her at the lake. Marta tells him they are a perfect match, and they kiss until they are interrupted by the familiar voice of an old, broken Jonas. Adam arrives. You lied to me, Jonas shouts. You wanted it all to happen again. Jonas begs to know why, and Adam explains that what is created today is the beginning of the end. The dark matter must be created so Adam, in the future, can lead it to its new purpose, the end of the world. Then, to ensure Jonas feels the pain that will turn him into Adam, he points a gun at Marta and pulls the trigger. She dies in Jonas's arms. Adam tells Jonas he will carry this pain for the rest of his life until he's finally ready to let go of it and her. Charlotte arrives at the nuclear plant in time to try and stop Clausen, but fails. The barrels are opened. They watch helplessly as the dark matter rises. The older Jonas finds Magnus, Bartosz, and Francisca. It's all your fault, Bartosz says. Jonas agrees, but he is there to save them from the apocalypse. In 2053, Elizabeth stabilizes the God Particle. In 2020, Katarina sees the effects in the Winden Cave. She follows the strange blue light to the sick Mundus door. She opens it and is flooded with a bright light. Young Noah joins Claudia, Regina, Peter, and Elizabeth in the bunker where they await the end of the world. At the nuclear plant, a portal opens between 2020 and 2053. Charlotte sees her daughter and mother, Elizabeth. 
They reach out to each other as Charlotte is pulled into the portal. Older Jonas's device activates. Bartosz demands to know where they're going, but Jonas does not reply. Young Jonas promises the dead Marta that he will save her. Standing above them is another Marta. I'm not who you think I am, she says. She activates a device similar to Jonas's time machine and promises to explain later. What time are you from? Jonas asks. Marta replies, the question isn't from what time, but from what world. Jonas takes one last look at his Marta's lifeless body, and then the world ends. If you made it all the way to the end of this recap, congratulations, you're ready to watch season three when it releases. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. 